Hello, my name is Lavina Ray, Chair of NSH's Awards Committee. In this series, Awards Cast, recipients of various NSH awards and scholarships will discuss the projects these scholarships have funded and share some of the life-changing opportunities they have encountered as a result of their involvement in the scholarship program. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Hulley. I work at Beaumont in Royal Oak, Michigan. I just graduated the Histotechnologist program here at Royal Oak this past August, and I am the recipient of the NSH Student Scholarship Award last year. And today I'm interviewing Maureen Doran. She is the recipient of the Histotech of the Year Award. Hi, I'm Maureen, and I've been in histology for 37 years. And I'm very honored to be the recipient of this very prestigious award from NSH. Thanks. So, Maureen, how did you first get into histology? Actually, I had an undergraduate research position in a lab when I was a freshman in college. And that lab used some histology for some of their research. And I was drawn to it. So, I enrolled in histology and um, microscopy classes. And I decided that I wanted to do that as a career. Wow. Okay. And since you said you've been doing this for 37 years, what's the biggest change in the histology field that you've seen? I would have to say it's probably the advancements in molecular biology, such as, you know, yeah. immunohistochemistry and cyclohybridization, mm -hmm. fish, and even, even digital pathology. And then along with that, all the automated equipment that goes along with these technologies. It really is crazy how much it's changed. I've only been here in the beginning. What were some of the essential steps that you took that allowed you to move up in your career over the years? I think the most important thing was obtaining continuing education and networking um, with others in my mm -hmm. field. And becoming mm -hmm. involved also in my state society and NSH was a key element in advancing in my career. It wasn't only mm -hmm. that I got to go to workshops and lectures and I got the knowledge and understanding of the new techniques, but I also had the support and resources for when I took these back to my lab that I could actually utilize them in my facility. And what is one tip or trick that you would pass on to someone who is new to the histology field? Well, I think it's, I would suggest maybe two. Um, first, don't mm -hmm. hesitate to reach out to others for information because I mean, we all have situations that uh, we're not sure, you know, how to troubleshoot this problem. And there's so many people out in our field that are, are willing to help, which is very evident by the talk on the blog. But also be open to new ideas. Just because it's always been done that way doesn't mean it's the best way for, for you at yeah, that definitely. time. Right. Um, it wasn't mentioned, but you were NSH's health and safety chair for a long period of time. What was the biggest safety violation that you've seen in a lab? Well, I, I think I did encounter many safety violations, but the biggest violation I feel is when safety was ignored and it was considered mm -hmm. insignificant. You know, that's just yeah. because I feel that nothing's more important than your health and safety of you and your coworkers. And, and so I actually think that's the biggest violation is to not consider it important. Yeah, yeah, it is very important, especially with everything that we deal with. Correct. Um, yeah. So, in the future, what do you think histology will be? What do you think the future has in store? You know, I'm. I think as a group, histologists we're bright, we're hardworking, and we're adaptable. And I'm not really sure where the science will take us, but I think mm -hmm. we'll play an important role because we're a valuable asset to the laboratory. And so I think no right. matter what path it takes, I think there will be a, a role for us in the future. Yeah, definitely. What What yeah. do you think so far has been your biggest challenge, you know, as you're starting your career? Yeah, I am just starting out. I started work a couple months ago, actually. I think the hardest part, I work in the advanced diagnostics lab over here. So we do a lot uh -huh. of immunohistochemistry and molecular tests. So right. The hardest part was really just getting trained on everything. I'm still not completely trained. There's just so much going on in the immunohistochemistry world and getting used to all the tests and all the troubleshooting. So uh -huh. I'm still getting used to everything there. I mean, I'm sure it, it feels overwhelming. It even feels overwhelming for um, those of us that have been doing it for many years because yeah, every time right. you turn, there's a new marker. 
you know, or, mm-hmm. or a new, you know, a, a new antigen retrieval or, or something that's, you know, going to affect, uh, there's so many things that affect, right. you know, the outcome of those um, tests. But even though you're new, I would encourage you to reach out to, you know, people in the society. I mean, yeah. you I mean, if you don't feel comfortable going on the blog, you can also just kind of look up who presented workshops at uh, NSH mm-hmm. last year and file them an email mm-hmm. and they will probably give you more information than you ever thought was out there. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, they're very, they're very willing to help because they've been in your shoes. And yeah, yeah, it's kind of scary to start out and um, or even if... <laughs> Yeah, and and even if you're been in the field a long time, you you start doing a a new procedure, and and you're mm-hmm. like, wow, this is, this is new to me, and I'm just not sure how to go about all the nuances of setting it up and troubleshooting it. Yeah, yeah, it is constantly growing and changing. Right, but that keeps it interesting, and 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 it keeps mm-hmm. us active and interested in in the yes. field. Well, thank you for interviewing me, Megan. Yeah.